diversity, equity, and inclusion are everyone's responsibility. Trans ideology claims dominion over nature itself. We can change the identity we were born with, they will tell you with wild-eyed certainty. Christians can never agree with this statement because these are powers they believe God alone possesses. They're our kids. These are our neighbors. It's cruel and it's callous. Not somebody else's kids, they're all our kids. You provide a definition for the word woman. Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. Mr. Secretary, do you believe that a child is capable of making life-altering de uh, decisions to maim themselves? Let me just say to you that I don't agree with your premise, but what I will say to you is children know much about themselves. Columbia University estimates over 3,000 children underwent breast removal surgery. Mastectomies for teens. Over 400 children had their genitals removed. We're talking about children as young as 12. Trans people, trans people belong here. We need trans people. We love trans people. Trans people belong here. But I'm here to let you know that this event is something that's going to be very beautiful. And for the children and the people that support it are going to realize that this is going to be the grooming of the next generation. The long-term repercussions for these surgeries, physically, psychologically, emotionally, can be devastating. But these surgeries bring in enormous sums of money to big city hospitals. That money is often used to donate to Democrat politicians. These surgeries are radically experimental. They're brutal and uncivilized. Well, what in the world is going on in our culture today? And is there anything we can do to change it or stop what's happening out there? Hi, I'm Ken Michael. Joining me is Pastor Josh Schwartz. And today we're going to answer some of those questions with our special guest. He is an author, a public speaker, a pastor. Uh, he's written several books, uh, including Redefining the Truth, Canceling Christianity, and his latest is The Assault on the Image of God. He is David Fields. Razzo. David, welcome to our program. Thank you so much for having me, guys. God bless you. Great to be here and talk with you. So before we dive into our topic today, just real quick, is there anything going on in your ministry that uh, you want the people to know about? Uh, I know that uh, you have a podcast. Why don't you tell us about that? Sure. Thank you. Worldview Matters. Uh, the website's worldviewmatters.tv, and it's going real well. We started it about a year ago, and my goodness, it's been a blessing. I get to talk to some unbelievable guests and, and experts and people that uh, can share a whole lot more than I can with uh, the audience and really inform, equip, and sometimes challenge and maybe even uh, irk <laughs> sometimes, but it's really, it's wonderful. I learn from every guest and after every podcast, I come away either encouraged or inspired. So I'm just so blessed to be able to talk to so many people. We do at least four a week, sometimes five a week. And again, it's worldviewmatters.tv. Thank you. That's awesome. And I know you've been a, a guest on Jan's program on several occasions and she absolutely loves having you on. Mm -hmm. So she's wonderful. And I'm just so thankful. She also you guys carry my book at Olive Tree Views, and uh, I'm just so blessed by that um, because it's gotten out there and, and uh, people are getting it that way. So I appreciate you guys very much. Yeah, and we appreciate you. You're on the cutting edge of, of what's going on in our culture. So let's talk about what's going on in our culture right now. I mean, we're sure. it's like we're being bombarded from every. I mean, everything, all at once. It's yeah. not just one or two things. It's everything. So in, in relationship to the video we just saw, we're seeing this cultural assault, uh, and it starts with our children. I have always said that mm -hmm. if you want to change a culture basically overnight or for sure within a generation, you start with the children. And yes. what, what are you seeing out there as you're talking to people about this assault on our culture and assault uh, specifically on our children? Well, thank you for using that word because it's in the title of my book, Assault on the Image of God, and that's where it starts. I think more Christians are starting to recognize this is a spiritual battle at its core, at the root. And they, it's an attack on God, Jesus, the truth, the biblical worldview, on Christians, on Israel, on um, life in mother's wombs, and on just us as Americans now because— of the way our country was founded. So yeah, there's an assault on the image of God, Imago Day, And I think, guys, we have, uh, meaning we meaning the church generally, uh, have been asleep at the wheel. 
Uh, there is now, there's still so many different churches. Some are the remnant church, which is, is great. They preach Bible prophecy, the whole council of God. And, and I love them. Great men and women of God are, are uh, going to some of these churches. But as you know, a lot of people are looking for churches where their pastor is actually teaching and preparing and equipping the saints, which is one of the key roles as a pastor to make disciples, to, to preach the gospel, to, to equip the saints and for ministry. And a lot of people over the last 50, 75, maybe even more years have not been equipped. And here we are today. So the average Christian, this is kind of, um, what's the word for it? Uh, we've been kind of sideswiped. Is that a word? Uh, they were not ready for this bombardment of demonic activity and influences in every institution in America, every aspect of our culture. It doesn't stop at education, but that is one of the earliest ones they got into uh, about 75 years ago or almost 100 years ago. And we can talk about that more if you want, but it had to start somewhere. They got into Berkeley and in Columbia in yeah. um, uh, Chicago, all these different colleges at, at the university level. Yeah. started with the professors, then they got into K through 12, and then they got the textbooks. We lost the textbooks with yes. the publishers and everything yeah. else, and the curriculum changed. And now we don't have God, we don't have the biblical worldview, and we are really fighting an uphill battle at this point. Absolutely. I, there's a couple of things I just want to touch on because that's huge. Um, in pastoring for a number of years and reading the scriptures, I think you see it replete throughout the scriptures that it is a satanic and demonic prerogative to deface the image of God and man. Mm. And so the, your, your book, The Assault on the Image of God, is, is I think deeply important for our culture in the here and now because Satan hates that humanity is the capstone of creation and that Jesus is the redeemer of humanity from their fallenness, their brokenness, and he's going to do whatever he can to deface the image of God and man. And I think, you know, you see that uh, specifically in Mark chapter 5 with the Gerasene demoniac. The Gerasene demoniac is literally uh, at his wit's end, cutting himself, being able to wrench mm. chains apart, crying out day and night because Satan is... is well, Satan and demons have influenced him and have uh, really tried to destroy him in, in entirety. And again, you know, like you said, that the church has been sideswiped and uh, lulled into this reality. That, oh, there's no such thing as demons. There's no such thing as hell. There's no uh. such thing as Satan. They don't even worry about it. And you know, C.S. Lewis says that is a that's a great thing that they love is for us to totally ignore and be <clears throat> more scientific to, to the spiritual realities of the demonic. Yes, I'm glad you said that spiritual realities of the demonic, because a lot of people, I mean, there's more to the biblical worldview, as wonderful as it is to believe God is, he exists, that we were created in his image, that he created all things, that Jesus is Lord, he died for our sins on the cross, he was raised from the dead, he ascended to the Father, all the, he was born of a virgin, all these different uh, essentials. But also to believe that there is such a thing as the devil, that the devil exists. He is real. Otherwise, what was Jesus doing? You know, Jesus spoke spoke to, you know uh, more about the devil, about hell. Um, but is it the interesting thing you brought up? I think that was the uh, passage where Jesus says, what is your name? Is that right, Josh? Yep, absolutely. And the, the demons replied, um, uh, we are. Le my name is Legion, for yes. we are many. Yes, that's fascinating to me because of how some in the transgender community are saying we identify as they and them. I'm thinking, oh, so there's more than one. Right. So th this, it's really interesting. The point is, this is a demonic movement. It starts with rebellion against God as Creator, rebellion against the way we were created in His image, male. Or female, as it, it's defined in Scripture. Yeah, and and now it's exploded into our entire culture. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look, what are we? What are they celebrating right now? We're in the month of June. The entire oh, month geez. is dedicated to the sin of pride. I mean, think about that. We can barely have a day to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. In fact, what did they do this year on on Resurrection Day? They had to have Pride Recognition Day. So this is a complete satanic, demonic uh, attack on Christianity. And it's spread uh, across businesses uh, to our government. We're seeing government officials mm -hmm 
not only promoting this, but encouraging this, our schools, mm. uh, the medical community. And now they've put it into also animal life. I don't know if you've seen this, David. It, it's a movie that's yeah. come out. It's called Queer Planet. And yeah. what they're doing is affirming that animals are, are queer and homosexual and have a lifestyle. They have a documentary that's out there right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you, like I said, you're seeing our government officials that are queer and transgender. And yeah. it, it's like the, the entire system that's set up right now, this demonic, satanic system mm -hmm. from the government on down. So when your child heads off to school, puts their backpack on, they're literally in not all, but most public schools in America now are pushing this trans ideology. Mm -hmm. It's Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, if you think Pride Month, just the word pride. If you know the Bible, what does God think of pride? Isn't that one of the sins that he hates? And it's 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 an offense to him, but yet in our culture now it's something that is celebrated openly, and they're boasting about it. They're reveling in the daytime in the streets. Um, so it's it's really interesting to see this turn. But we have to go back to there's so many catalysts I believe that we can look at. But one was the plan of Italian Marxist Antonio Gramsci. I don't know if you remember he wrote these prison notebooks in I believe the late 1800s. And he knew he and the Marxists and communists at that time that wanted to destroy the threat of America because of our Judeo-Christian founding and a country, they, they knew we couldn't be overtaken militarily, right? So what did they, they, it was brilliant but evil. They said, we've got to infiltrate the nation from within. And what did they do? They went into our culture. And they tried to, in his words, I'm paraphrasing Antonio Gramsci, he said, we're going to break down the wall of Christianity by a long, progressive march through the major institutions over a generation. Exactly. Now, I didn't quote quote exactly, right. but this, is, this was the plan. This isn't just all of a sudden, oh, my goodness, it's transgenderism and, and LGBTQ. They have more celebrated holidays than than uh, we've ever had in America before. How did we get here? Well, we have got to go back, in this case, over 100 years. So there's so many different things that have attacked us from different angles, whether that be education, the government, corporations, and un unfortunately, guys, even in the church, mm -hmm. the church has been compromised and infiltrated. I know, exactly. uh, Josh, you're, you're, you can probably speak to that as well. Yeah, we're gonna. That's our next segment. Uh, I just follow up real quick. Uh, then sure. Professor Kinsey picked up the ball and really got this thing rolling uh, back in the 40s and 50s. So I mean, it just indoctrinated yes. our entire. Uh, collegiate system. So, yeah. I mean, uh, it, completely uh, demonic is what we're seeing. And what's fascinating to me and is you mentioned there the major <clears throat> institutions. And now as we are, say, 100 years, 120 years removed from that, we've got all these major institutions that are legitimately pushing the DEI movement, diver yes. diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that which we, it's heard everywhere. We've got to be diverse, we got to be mm -hmm. equitable, and we got to be inclusive in everything. And this is exactly what we're seeing. Yeah. And, and here's the sad part. And, and many companies, many people in these companies, many CEOs, they don't want to go along with this, but they know <laughs> if they don't bend the knee to the tenants of this, that they'll be excluded. Uh, yeah. They won't be able to do business. And in mm -hmm. many cases, they're yep. fired from their job yep. or at yes. least minimized at their job. They're demoted. And that's, that's what we've seen throughout our entire government, our our government has been depleted of Judeo-Christian leaders, and, yeah. and it started uh, decades ago, but it really kicked into high gear, I think, in 2008 with that administration. Yes, and then if you go to 2020, look what happened in the streets of America then with the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation wreaking havoc. And they were so sponsored by, you know, supported by China, and they, they had money coming in from outside the country, right? And they're a global network. If they didn't just all of a sudden appear in 2020, they have been around, they've been prepped for that moment. And if you think about it, people were also fired for their jobs for not, like, you know, we were threatened for keeping churches open. Exactly. In the medical profession, they were threatened. So the DEI is now another way that communist policy is being implemented in America. These are cultural Marxists. I call this the cult of, of the Marxist cult 
of DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, exactly. because they're using that. It's like communist policy in all these institutions, and especially at the university level. And boy, have we! I think a lot of people have really opened their eyes, especially since October 7, and the protests that have been happening on college campuses, and the DEI push there, they are against the Judeo-Christian worldview, Christians and Jews. And by the way, if we think they're just anti-Semites, we better wake up and go, okay, they, because you've heard their expression, Saturday people first and then the Sunday people. Exactly. They're coming after the Saturday worshipers, the Jews, and then the Sunday worshipers, the Christians. We are in the way of the globalism, of their ultimate agenda, of their communist agenda. Exactly. Mm. Well, David, before we jump into our next segment, uh, you have a book out. Uh, why don't you tell our viewers about that? Sure. Assault on the Image of God. And this, I, I talk about a lot of the attacks on the church, on, uh, on, on the pro-life community. There are things that we've never seen in American history, um, freedom of speech, uh, on the inerrancy of Scripture. Actually, if we go back a ways in the church, where the church is concerned, the inerrancy of Scripture was attacked. You have to, have to attack God and Jesus and his word. And so the inerrancy of Scripture was attacked, the biblical worldview, uh, Barna, all the research that he's come up with, uh, the wor biblical worldview heading for the cliff, uh, one of the chapters, I believe, if I remember what right, but there's so many different ways we believers and what we believe biblically is under attack today in a country that was founded on this freedom that we have, this religious freedom. And right now, things have been flipped to now we are being discriminated against. And it's really fascinating to see this if you know true American history. And I emphasize true mm -hmm. because it's not being taught anymore in the schools or at the university level. And we can talk more about that maybe another time, but I think most of your viewers and listeners know that education has been compromised. So, yeah, I talk about all these different issues where attacks are coming. They're more blatant than ever. They are increasing and there's not as much resistance. In fact, some are accepting the fact that it's OK or not the fact they're accepting that, well, yeah, it's okay to attack Christians because, yeah, what they believe is either hateful or intolerant. So they've used words as weapons and accusations to accuse us. And now we are playing defense like we usually do. But we have to remember, guys, even though this is happening, it doesn't change our mission overall. And it doesn't change the job that we have to do, to preach the truth, to keep speaking. And we are ambassadors for Christ. We represent him no matter what. And I know it's hard. I know it's it's hard in the days that we're living in. For a lot of your viewers, they're potentially overwhelmed by what's happening. They see this, the, the days of Noah, the days of Lot, however you want to describe them, the immorality off the charts. But we are here for such a time as this. And I know that sounds maybe uh, trite, but that, that's the truth. God has us here in his sovereignty. He has all of us here to be his representative, to, to be light and salt and whatever happened to Christian influence in our country. So we've got to try to rally the remnant because too many, there are too many apostates, too many false teachers, too many people that just do not even with, hold the biblical truths anymore. Exactly. So we're going to we're gonna flip right into the, exactly what you were talking about now. We have an election coming up, and man, uh, I think this is going to cascade into several things. I, I pray it doesn't get violent, but we certainly could see mm. some violence and lawlessness. I know I'm asked everywhere I go, hey, do you think there's going to be a civil war? And I always tell people, uh, yeah, it's already started. We have a cultural civil mm. war going on out there mm -hmm. right now. But you, you hit it on the head. I believe we're in the situation right now because not only have we remove Judeo-Christian values from our culture, but the church, like you've noted several times, is completely uh, void or just uh, standing on the sidelines, not speaking up. So let's take a quick look at this video and we'll comment on it. When the church in America has lost authority to change the culture and instead becomes it. And let us confess our faith today in the words of the Sparkle Creed. What they're trying to do is completely demolish Western civilization and then to rebuild it in a just society. If you're here and you're gay, and maybe nobody even knows, I just want to applaud you for your faith and the fact that you would even step foot inside of a church. And when you long to know that your Heavenly Father accepts you and you're hoping the body of Christ will be a representation of his love for you. 
I believe in the non-binary God whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads. I think the problem today in our culture is many of our words have been co-opted and stolen and dumbed down and reversed. Social justice is sold as something that it isn't. Critical race theory is sold as something that it isn't. Jesus was legit the most privileged and most powerful human on earth. And he gave it all up. And if you follow a, a white Jesus, man, I think God wants to do something to your heart today. That message that they're going out and taking the world is not you need to repent of your sin, receive Christ. Instead, the message that you actually have is they are under the weight of racism or sexism or homophobia, and then we need to unify them together. I mean, now we got to come up with solutions. What do pastors do that are being confronted with this? What do churchgoers do if their pastor isn't preaching the full counsel of God? Maybe they're not preaching some of what we just saw, but they're not dealing with these hard issues. What, what do pastors do first, and then what do uh, people that are attending these types of churches do? I'm sorry. I'm still absorbing that video and what that, that by creed the way, that they were. By the oh way, that my, video that, you watched, the, the woman that was preaching on, on uh, Jesus had a tunic and two dads, that is about, I don't know, eight miles from where we're recording right now. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Because I remember years ago I wrote about this uh, in San Francisco area, one of the churches, they had a Beyonce mass and they did all Beyonce. Yes. It was just so anyway, this is um, this is a mockery. Mm-hmm. of God. And and I, I think some of them are useful idiots. Others are really trying to say in your face, you know, to the creator, yes. to God. And uh, it really is heartbreaking and disturbing. And I hope that people that are watching and listening to this program have the discernment to just look at that and go, that's, that's horrific. That's apostate. That's absolutely wrong. That's, that's, this is a, a different gospel. This is not even the right Jesus. And they're, they're so far off and they need to repent and it's it's just a Josh. I'm sure it's an affront to pastors. Um, now, unfortunately, you've got to use air quotes around pastors and churches today. But I think what you asked about how the remnant pastor has to think audience of one. Exactly. I answer to God. Exactly. I seek His approval and not the approval of man, because culture is not going in that direction toward God, right? Exactly. But we, pastors have a job to do. It's it's a hard job. And uh, it's a huge responsibility, but it's also a privilege and, as an, and an honor to represent the King of Kings and to have a flock in your care. And you've got to equip them. You've got to shepherd the people, protect the people, but equip them as well and inform them. That means the whole counsel of God. So my, I mean, my two cents, because I hear from people like you do all the time, they can't find a good church in their area or they can't find a pastor that will preach about anything that's happening outside of the church. I mean, it's great that they're committed to the gospel. That's great. That's wonderful. But they don't touch on all these issues, all these things that are affecting kids in your community, the schools, your culture. Um, And I always say, if you love your neighbor, you will be concerned about what's happening. Even if you don't have kids in the school system, even if you don't have any investments in corporations or whatever, because they're sending a message, they're indoctrinating their, it's communist policy in America, that they're influencing people. And sometimes they use the church, but for pastors, stay true to God's word. Um, read the scriptures where they said, no, we're not going to stop preaching about this name. We cannot stop. Uh, what, what is it, Josh? At 420, we cannot stop speaking about what we've seen and heard. Yep. And then when they threatened them not to use the name of Jesus, they said, we answer to God, not you. Yep, we true. must obey God, not man. I mean, it's I, I'm trying to oversimplify it, I guess, in a short time because we're, our time is limited here. For the congregants, regardless of if your pastor is preaching the way you believe he should or not, you still, we still have a responsibility as individual believers to reach a dying and lost culture. Amen. And so every one of us can be used. Every one of us has a sphere of influence. And I'll let you guys uh, chime in now. Sorry. <laughs> no, I think that's great. You're, you're talking about Acts chapter 4, uh, Peter and John being arrested for preaching the gospel message and not being willing to stop 
teaching, not stop Amen. teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, preaching that Jesus is the Savior. And, and I think you're absolutely right there. Uh, we have to uh, equip pastors and encourage pastors, pray for pastors to stand mm -hmm. strong in the midst of absolute, utter, destructive uh, culture around us. Um, because you're correct. We are answering to a, the audience of one that is uh, the Lord mm -hmm. himself. We are to be proclaiming him and honoring him and glorifying him so that we look different than the world. The world mm -hmm. wants us to to look like it, but Jesus came to take us out of the world. He came to take us to be an example in the midst of brokenness, in the midst of a totally deplete and broken and debaucherous culture. So we have to fight against that. And as you were speaking, the only scripture that kept coming to my mind was found in First Peter. And I just want to read it for a moment. First Peter chapter 4, beginning of verse 12, says this, it is a warning in the midst of a, the Neronian empire, Roman empire. Uh, this is what Peter says. He says, beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes to you, to, upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share in Christ's suffering, that you may also rejoice and be glad when the, his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of God... And the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evil doer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let God glorif but let him glorify God in that name. So that is what spurs us on. We will be tested. We will be tried. There will be suffering. There will be trials. But if we are being faithful with the word of God, faithful in following Jesus and his example and proclaiming his name, then we must expect to suffer and know that it honors and glorifies God in our consistency and our faithfulness. Well, amen, Josh. There are churches, too many churches in America that won't touch that scripture because suffering is not a popular topic. And um, it's, it's really sad because we will be persecuted. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Um, thank you for sharing that because you won't hear that in the Joel Osteen churches and the others who are, are teaching a different doctrine. And it's just really sad. And people, when they do face trials, and they will, then some of them fall away from the church because they said, well, I thought everything was supposed to be great. I was supposed to have a, a blessed life, you know, mm -hmm. every day is a Friday and all that. Um, there is something you said that made me think of the seeker sensitive church and which is really disappointing how far it's gotten. They entertain rather than equip. Exactly. And I want to go to a quote I just saw recently. Uh, it said uh, the music when this is talking about worship now before the the preaching even starts. There's preparing pe the people's hearts for God's word. And there's a way to do that, seeking the Lord and, and worshiping in spirit and in truth. And then there's a way not to do that and try to be like the world and attract a crowd. Well, this quote says the music must not turn the church into an audience enjoying the music, but into a congregation singing the Lord's praises in his presence. And unfortunately, guys, I'm, I'm sure you've heard too many people, you know, getting a hold of you or asking you for advice that because their church, they're entertaining from the stage. They're musicians or whatever the way it's set up. And that's kind of like the, the American way. I don't know how we got off into that. Music became such a big focus. Um, but if you're being entertained and you're just sitting down watching, then you're an observer and you're not participating in the worship of God with all the saints. Just my two cents. Absolutely. Amen. Well, David, I want to thank you for being with us this week. But folks, this is only part one of two parts. David will be joining us next week as we talk about uh, what's going on in the culture. We're going to continue this conversation. So David, I'd like to thank you, and we will see you next week. Well, that's it for this week, folks. Join us next week for part two of our interview with David Fiorazzo. Until then, keep looking up. Keep looking up.